Welcome everybody to Appreciating Comic Book Art. Now I know I've done a lot of Mark Sylvester stuff uh, lately, but there's, I mean, why not, right? <clears throat> I brought this up yesterday when I was on stream, when I was doing the uh, head sketch Reaper Destroyer, and I was, I'm, I'm going to have this also on Ott and stuff as our, uh, one of the entries to the books that made us. And I want to do that specifically, I don't know what the hell this is. Some kind of dirt, what the fuck? Anyway. <clears throat> this was a book when they came out, the uh, Wizard Millennium, Millennium Editions. There was a Jim Lee, a Mark Silvestri, and a Michael Turner one. I got all three of them. Uh, I think Jim Lee's came out first, and then maybe Silvestri, and then Turner. I think that's all the ones they did. They might have done more, I'm not sure, but at least I, I got these three. And uh, this was one of those books that uh, I was already big into Silvestri, so when this came out, this uh, it was just, you know, reinforced my love for this dude in the art some really great write-ups here uh as we dive into this nice hardcover edition of this book uh can't remember what to pay for this it had to have been like 29 dollars 30 dollars back in the day and this was like early 2000s i want to say so i'm gonna jump through this it's a lot of pages we'll try to get through it as quickly as we can sorry about the glare I'm still working on the lighting down here, but uh, yeah, so I mean, he was working on Hunter Killers at the time, uh, he had done the new X Men run, and he was just at this point, he was uh, he was flexing, like I like to say, like he was on top of the world, like he was killing it amongst a lot of the artists. You know, Jim Lee was doing his stuff at DC. This was actually a fun time, the early 2000s was a fun time in comics for me because. Uh, Jim Lee had come back and, and did that run on Hush and was doing some fun stuff at DC. Uh, Mark Silvestri was was doing his uh, X-Men run, getting into Hunter's Killers, uh, just doing some amazing cover work. And Michael Turner was doing his stuff on uh, you know Fathom, Soulfire, Batman, Superman. It was a good time. Like This was a good time in comics. Uh, I really... I remember being really inspired during these years. And this book was great, you know, just read up on Mark. You got to see how he broke into the industry, uh, his thoughts on certain characters, uh, the creation of characters, um, just really good stuff. In fact, I, I'm going to go back and read this all again because it's been a few years since I've read this. But if you can find it, I definitely I recommend it. I recommend it if you can get it. It's really good. So... <clears throat> The Art School Confidential. I don't remember a lot, about, a lot of this. Really cool. Frank Frizzetta. Frizzetta. Uh, which, I mean, like, they talk about the, obviously, the big influences that that Mark had coming up. And, uh, he, you know, he broke onto the scene. You know, Once he hit Uncanny X-Men, I mean, he really kind of shot into stardom when it came to Marvel. And then he got kind of pushed aside for Jim Lee. And, you know, <clears throat> I guess I would say rightfully so. I mean, you know, this comics is all about the new, fresh, you know, the bigger, badder thing. But, uh, you know, he got moved to Wolverine so that Jim Lee could take over Uncanny. And he had a hell of a run on Wolverine. And then got the opportunity to get into uh, and do his own thing at Image. This is what I was talking about last night. Here's the, oh no, okay, it is him. I see, I thought it was Michael Turner completely, but it is, it's uh, Silvestri. So I don't know if you can see that, if it's going to blur out. But that's the original darkness design. Pretty cool. A lot different looking, that's for sure. Uh, I like that too, but ultimately I like what they ended up going with. Some of his best work, I thought, the, the new X-Men run, the 154... There's a 151 to 154. Uh, just beautiful work. I mean, some of the best I, I think he's ever done. Absolutely love it. Yeah, kind of look at his uh, his protégés, you know. Joe Weems, Master Inker. The guy's inking Reaper Destroyer right now. Along with uh, Matt Bat Banning, who, is he in this book? I would assume he'd be. Oh, he's not. That's that's interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. Like again, like I said, just kind of dives through 
some of his fate the, the iconic stories he did while doing Uncanny and doing Wolverine. I mean, even back in the days, his, his art was awesome. You know, I didn't appreciate it at the time when I was a kid because I was probably too obsessed with like Jim Lee and Liefeld. But once I really got into Sylvester, and I really dug the stuff he did with Cyber Force. But it was uh, Spawn 25 when he did that that really got me into Cy and, into Sylvester. And then I went back, like I always do, when I get into an artist, you know, I'll go back and find their older work and really just kind of study stuff. But uh, Darkness was great. And again, like I can't say enough about the new X-Men run. Some of the best art I've seen him do. The pages were full of energy. The colors were great. The inks were great. Hunter's Killers was pretty good too, but I think he had a lot of assistance on Hunter's Killers. Uh, it was a little bit looser style, um, but I still enjoyed it quite a bit. But this is what is golden about these books, or the sketchbooks. I love the old sketches, the old designs, like Striker and Ripclaw. Original designs there. <clears throat> Pinups and just, you know, sketch ideas for his characters at Top Cow. This was one of the one of the pictures that made me absolutely fall in love with Mark Silvestri. There's just something about that. It was so, I mean, I loved the way that he did um, uh, cloth and folds. Like, it just, there's something very pleasing to the eye with that style. And it's something I want to incorporate into my own work. And, like, just the line work. Even in, like, a sketchier form. And, you know, <clears throat> a lot of times... Finished pencils don't have to be so tight. Like, yeah, we got used to, like, really, really tight pencilers in the 90s, like uh, Finch and uh, Stephen Platt and a bunch of other guys. But, I mean, like, this this is finished, you know, it can be finished. An inker can go in. There's enough information there to really bring it together. Um, and so seeing stuff in this kind of form, it really gives you an appreciation for, for the art form, for penciling. Because it's a lot different than inking. I mean, that's what the inkers are there for. That's the finished product is they're bringing it all together which is one of the reasons why you want to work with fantastic inkers inkers that are really good artists themselves and know know what they're doing yeah there's that there's that darkness right there i'm actually surprised they didn't ever do anything with that original design like come back to it you know weave that into the story somehow or create another character because that's a that's it's a cool design i like it I almost wonder after doing Spawn if that's why the darkness kind of originally had a cape. It really got into drawing that cape when he was doing Spawn. A kind of cool checklist. Uh, now we're getting into the gallery, which is always cool. I love these gallery pages. You get to look back at the old covers that he worked on at Marvel back in the day. You know, some very fun, the old school storytelling covers that Marvel used to do. Uh, you know, iconic stuff like that. Is that Wolverine turning into the, was it the Brood? I can't quite remember. And although I like the, the X-Men work, uh, I think he worked a lot with Mark Farmer on the inks. It wasn't until, you know, you started getting with uh, Scott Williams and then later on Bat and Weems that I think he really had an inker that understood his line work. Such an awesome cover there. I love the Witchblade homage cover that, they, that he did to that <clears throat> yeah man makes me uh makes me miss this you know man it's such a good cover i wish that would i wish they had that blown up that one too like all th this stretch of covers right here i wish they had those blown up not just kind of smaller like there's a lot of cool dynamic action in that one but yeah it's just this misses makes me miss the era Right, the cool era of comics. The nineties, man. Late eighties, early nineties, mid nineties. There was just fun, excitement, um, new ground being broken. Just a lot of creativity going on back in the day. Some of his more modern covers at the time. Of course the, the fold out cover to Cyber Force One. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's got all his image work in here. That's what these the Millennium books were really cool with. Just you got to dive in and see a lot of the cover works. One of my favorite covers. One of my all time favorite covers. Simply amazing. All around. Colors are great. Obviously the posing is great. Uh just phew, still to this day one of my favorites. Got the crossover with Billy Tushi's She. 
In fact, I think that's that's Tushy's uh, cover right there. Yep. This was. Oh, so he did the inks on this. That's cool. I didn't say because this was Brandon Peterson that did the codename Strike Force. I always loved that cover. It's just a beautiful shot. Steve Furcal, man. He was killing it back in the day. I'm pretty sure that was Furcal. No, it was rather Steigerwald. No shit. Looks a lot like Sir Cow. Fur Cow? Did I say Sir Cow? Jeez. <clears throat> yeah, guys, highly recommend. If you get a chance to find this, uh, if you're a big Sylvester fan like I am, this is a must for the collection. Uh, I don't know where you can get these. Maybe eBay. I don't even know what they're going for. But do it. Do it. That's all I got to say. Yeah, it's, it's moments like these, again, like I miss the industry, it makes me want, or the old school industry, you know, the stuff that made me, made me excited, made me want to be a creator every day, I'd, I'd sit down at the, at the drawing table and want to create stuff like this, um, I miss that energy in the industry, and uh, that's what, you know, a lot of us are trying to bring back, with our own characters, our own IPs, awesome. <laughs> it's man, it's so good. Again, look at look at that cape. Look at all the folds. I mean, it just gives such a, a different dynamic to. It gives it life and energy. It becomes a character itself. The cape is a character itself in this this pinup. It's absolutely gorgeous. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely find this. Got a couple more pages here and trying to flip through some of these. Um, that Death Maid cover was really cool. Oh, that's awesome. Forgot about that. Oh, man, that Ghost Rider. Yeah. Woo. Forgot about that. It's so beautiful. Man. He was killing it at this point. Just killing it with the stuff he was doing. Oh yeah, all those wizard covers. Yeah. yeah, I've definitely looked at this book a few times. I try not to look at it as much anymore because I'm trying to keep it in as best condition as I can. But yeah, check this out, guys. <clears throat> the Mark Silvestri Millennium Edition Wizard uh, hard covers that they put out. Um, and maybe I'll look at the Jim Lee and I'll look at the Michael Turner one when I get a chance as well. But... These are just fun books, fun for the collection. Go out and get them. Look at it, look for them on eBay. I don't know if they're in print anymore, so you might have to find them on eBay. But highly, highly suggest it. So, all right, guys. Uh, if you like this channel, please hit the subscribe button, <clears throat> hit the like, share on social media, and I will talk to you all later. Peace.